Hello, and welcome to this how-to all about how to strengthen our deepest abdominals. These muscles are the foundation of our core strength and are super important for keeping our lower back strong, safe, stable, and flexible. Now, did you know that we actually have four layers of abdominal muscles and that it's the deepest layer that's responsible for supporting our spine, our pelvis, and for coordinating the strength between our upper and lower body. It's really just in our image-driven culture that we've been encouraged to focus on the most superficial layer of our abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, or the six-pack. It does play a role in protecting our lower back, but it's really the deepest layer, the transverse abdominis, or the TA, that's most important for our core strength and lower back health. This muscle wraps around the waist like a corset. So when it fires, it doesn't shorten or crunch the waist like the six pack does, but rather it lengthens the waist and decompresses the spine. When the TA is strong, it narrows the waist. And so although this muscle isn't as popular as the six pack, it should be because it keeps us looking long and lean. And more importantly, it keeps our back safe. Now, as in all my how-tos, I'm going to be guiding you through a wide variety of exercises. So there's lots of good material that's accessible for beginners or for those who might already be suffering from low back issues. And then I'll be progressing to gradually adding in more challenging exercises for those who are ready to go further. So I encourage you to do only what feels solid and safe for you. And over time, as you continue to practice, you might find that you're actually able to add in more and more of the exercises that I offer here. This is an important how-to. Low back issues affect almost all of us at one point or another in our lives. But as I'm gonna show you here, it is possible to give our low back strong support from deep within so that we might be able to prevent injury or recover more quickly if and when any injury does arise. Make sure to listen to your body as you're moving through all of this. And as always, feel free to modify or discard anything that doesn't feel right for you. And with all of that said, let's get started. Okay, so the very first core strengthening exercise we're gonna practice is breathing. The transverse abdominis, which from now on I'm gonna to refer to as the TA, is an accessory breath muscle. And because we breathe all the time, it's a great way of finding and firing this very important core muscle. Now, we're gonna do the sitting up, so I invite you to come to sitting up into a chair with your feet flat on the floor, or if you wanna sit on the floor like I am, I really encourage you to sit up on folded up blankets or towels. I'm sitting on a meditation cushion so that you can be right up onto your sitting bones and your knees are below your hips. Okay, and we're gonna practice belly breathing so that you can feel the difference between the muscles relaxing and firing, okay? And so I invite you to bring your hands onto the belly. And if you can just begin setting up a slow breath rhythm, breathing in slowly and out slowly. And just continue there. Belly breathing is often taught as a way of relaxing the body, of really getting more grounded. I often teach it for that reason as well. And how it works is that as you breathe in, you're going to allow the belly to expand into your hands. And as you breathe out, you're gently drawing the belly in. Okay, so breathing in, you're letting the belly expand outwards into your hands. And breathing out, you're gently drawing the belly back in. Okay, and just continue, inhaling to expand. And exhaling to draw in. And why this breath is so great is that it encourages the diaphragm, our main breath muscle, that's right at the bottom of the rib cage, to really move more with the breath. As we breathe in, the diaphragm moves down to help make room for air, and that causes the belly to expand. And as we breathe out, the diaphragm lifts to help push out our air, and the belly draws in. Okay, so breathing in, 
letting the belly expand and breathing out, letting it draw in. And then just keep breathing at your own pace. And we're going to make the exhale a bit more muscular. Okay, we're going to inhale and let the belly expand. And then as you exhale, feel as though you're slowly squeezing out your air. Feel your navel press back towards your spine. And this is firing our TA. Okay, so breathing in, you let the belly expand. And breathing out, you're slowly squeezing out your air. And you're drawing your navel back towards your spine, firing your TA. And just continue breathing at your own pace. Okay, as I said before, the transverse abdominus wraps around the whole body like a corset. And so when it's firing, when we're slowly squeezing out our air, you might feel the navel draw in towards the spine. You might feel the abdominals pull tight across the hip bones like a seat belt. Or you might feel the whole waist in general, narrow. And all of this is the TA. It's a really long muscle that goes right from our ribs to our hips. Okay, so we're trying to fire this muscle on our exhale without contracting our jaw or our throat, without gripping our hips or our glutes. And this can actually be quite challenging. So I encourage you to practice just trying to isolate your TA, slowly squeezing out your air. Okay, and this is something that I encourage you to practice often. So make sure you take time during the day. And then if you can, we're going to add on. And we're going to try to keep our TA firing when we're breathing in and out. And this is really important because if we're lifting weights or running or just being really active, we want to keep our TA firing as we're breathing in and out so that our lower back is protected. Okay, so the belly will expand as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, we'll draw in our TA. And we're going to keep it engaged so that when you breathe in, it's only relaxing just a little bit. We're going to try to keep it held. And as you breathe out, we're going to refire it back up to full. OK, so breathing in, it relaxes just slightly. It's mostly staying really strong. And then as you exhale, we're going to try to keep it firing. Okay, so instead of letting the belly expand on our inhale, I don't want you to breathe shallowly up into the neck and shoulders. I don't want you to go into that. Instead, let's try to breathe down into the bottom of the ribs, okay, so that as we breathe in, the ribs widen out like an accordion expanding. You might feel your T-shirt widening across your back. And then as you breathe out, the ribs might actually narrow as our waist is narrowing, as we're tightening our seatbelt and drawing the navel in. Okay, so instead of letting the belly expand, we're going to breathe into the bottom of the ribs, widening them out like an accordion. And as you breathe out, we're refiring our core. Okay, so just seeing if you can feel that you're keeping your TA strong as you breathe in and out. Okay, breathing more into the back of the body, into the sides of the body, rather than belly breathing, and rather than breathing shallowly up into the neck and the top of the chest. We want to try to keep the jaw relaxed, the shoulders relaxed, the hips and the glutes. Okay, so again, that can take some practice as well. Now, as we're firing our TA, you might notice that there's different degrees that we can fire it in. And this is actually really helpful because we can fire our core muscles to different amounts depending on the activity that we're doing. OK, so let's just go to a really strong contraction of our TA, really narrowing our waist, tightening our seatbelt, drawing our navel in. Let's go to like 80 okay, percent and just seeing if you can hold that there around there as you're breathing in and out. Again, it will relax slightly on the inhale 
but then it refires back up to that 80% on your exhale. Okay. And so this strong contraction might be what you'd use for when you're lifting weights, when you're running, when you're being really active when you need to be really protecting your lower back, especially if you have an injury there, you want it to be really strong, okay? So then let's relax the muscles just slightly and go to maybe 50%. Okay, and just seeing if you can breathe there, again, breathing into the bottom of the ribs, like an accordion. And this 50% contraction might be if you're walking, doing light activity, okay? so. You're keeping the muscles firing, but not right at their maximum. And then let's go to maybe 30% contraction of the TA. And this might be what you'd have when you're sitting, working at the computer with good posture, of course. Okay, the muscles are still firing as you're breathing into the bottom of the ribs. And then if you can relax the muscles completely and go to zero. OK, and zero would be what you'd have when you're sleeping, when you're relaxing and you want to spend time at zero for some point in the day. And you also want to spend time in different amounts of that engagement throughout the day so that you're depending on what you're doing. You're keeping your core strong. You're keeping your back protected. OK, and so I just want to make sure I'm clear that firing RTA is not the same thing as sucking in. When we suck in the belly, usually we're lifting the chest. We start to breathe really shallowly up into the neck and the shoulders. And this is a very ungrounded position. It's actually less stable. So it, it could actually set us up for injury. So we don't want to do that. We want to be able to relax the shoulders, breathe down into the bottom of the ribs, and be able to fire our abdominal muscles more or less depending on the activity that we're doing, okay? And so I encourage you to practice this breathing at different times through the day, finding those different amounts, depending on what you're doing. And just to know that I have another how-to called How to Connect to the Pelvic Floor that focuses on how to use the breath as well to fire the muscles in the pelvic floor. And this is really important. The pelvic floor also works with the transverse abdominals to create more pelvic stability, lower back stability, core strength. And it's a really important part of our, of our core connection, in my opinion. So I strongly recommend that you check that one out as well. Okay. And so happy breathing. And let's move on to our next set of exercises. Okay, so this next set of exercises is going to be done lying down. I want you to have a small towel handy. I'm just using a hand towel that I'm folding in half, in half again, and once more so that it can fit right underneath the lower back. Okay, and I'll get you to come to lying down. And if it feels best for you to have a pillow or another towel underneath your head or your neck so that you can be comfortable there, please make sure that you have that. OK, we're going to start off establishing our neutral spine. And what that feels like is if you can bring the heels of your hands onto your hip bones and fold the fingertips across towards the pubic bone. And you want to feel that those bones are level, that they're not arching one way or rounding another way, that they're just level. And when you have that, you should feel that right behind your lower back, right behind your belly button, is slightly off the floor. We have a little bit of curvature there, and that's where we're going to bring our towel. Okay, and hopefully it's folded up enough that it fits right into that space so that your lower back is in complete contact with the towel. Okay, you need to have your ribs down onto the mat as well. So if your ribs tend to flare up, you want to bring them down and that will help create that neutral alignment so that you can feel that contact with the towel all the time. So you can adjust the height of it or the size of it as you need for your body. Okay. Again, just checking in that the pelvis is level and you're in a neutral there. Okay. So let's just fire up our TA. You're going to breathe into the bottom of the ribs. And as you breathe out, squeeze the bottom of the ribs, narrow the waist, 
tighten the seat belt, draw the navel in, just doing that in stillness. So we're not tipping the pelvis one way, we're not doing any motion. You just wanna feel those muscles fire. And we're gonna start off firing them at maybe 50, 60% for these first exercises. And then as we progress and the exercises become more challenging, you'll need to fire them up more and more, getting to more like 80, 90, getting up to our maximum depending on how far you go, okay? So we're breathing in, we're holding our TA firing as you're breathing in, breathing into the bottom of the ribs. Lift your right toes, and as you breathe out, fire your TA, and you're gonna slide your right heel out along to the mat, and breathing in as you return, and we're gonna alternate legs, okay? Lifting your left toes, breathing out, firing your TA and sliding the heel out along the mat and breathing in as you return. And what you want to feel is that you're keeping yourself stable, that there's no shifting of your back. It's not lifting away from the towel. Your pelvis isn't moving. It's holding itself steady. And I also want you to feel that you're firing your TA just before you extend the leg out. And this is an important concept that we're going to pre-fire our TA and about halfway through our breath out, we're going to start the movement okay? and then breathing in. So we don't move first. We start our exhale first. We feel that TA fire and then we do the move. Okay, breathing in as you return. And just doing that one more time on each side. So the leg that's moving is not the important part. It's the core that's our important part. So we wanna feel that fire first. Okay, breathing out, extending the leg out, feeling total stability, nothing has changed, and breathing in to return. Now, only if that feels good, we're going to progress to extending both legs out, okay? Lifting up both toes, breathing out, firing your core stronger now as you slide your heels out, and then breathing in as you return, okay? And feel free to use socks if your feet are slippery or whatnot. Okay, breathing out, firing your TA, feeling your ribs stay down, your back stay down, your core stay tight, and breathing in as you're coming in. Okay, and just continue either with one leg or two legs. <sighs> breathing out, firing your core, trying to keep your neck and your shoulders easy. You can always use a pillow or a towel there if you need. And again, breathing out. And we want to fire our deep muscles. So we're not letting the abdominals dome up. That's going to work more the superficial layer. And we want to try to get into our deep layer. Okay, just doing one more like that, <sighs> keeping the navel down towards the spine, holding everything stable, breathing in as you return. Okay, and then our next set of exercises is going to be raising the leg. So you'll breathe in to prepare, keeping your TA engaged, and breathing out, <sighs> firing your TA as you extend one leg out. Again, no shifting through the hips or the back, and breathing in as you return. And again, breathing out, feeling your waist narrow, feeling that pressure against the towel with your navel to your spine, and then breathing in as you return. And continue, pre-firing your core, and then extending the leg, and breathing in as you come in. Now, the height of the leg does make a difference. Having the leg down lower is harder. It's going to have more tendency for the back to arch. You've really got to work your core there. Having the leg a little bit higher will be easier to hold everything stable. Okay, so you find the height that feels right for you where you can stay in good form. Okay, and then if you can, we're going to bring the arms to the ceiling and we're going to extend opposite arm and leg away from each other and breathing in to return. And then just continue. Again, you're keeping your ribs onto the mat. You're keeping your back in contact with the towel. Breathing in as you return. Breathing out as you pre-fire your core. And then the arm and leg move. Breathing in as you return. And so just continue here. We'll do one more to each side. 
And you want to feel that your core is the strongest part of your body. So it's firing more and more, maybe 60, 70, 80 percent, getting into that range. And so that the arms and legs can feel like they're floating, that they're not really holding themselves up, that the core is holding them up. Okay, staying with that, or if you can, we're going to bring the legs into the air. And this is even more challenging. So just make sure you have that stability through your back. Bring one leg up and then the other leg up to join it. Nothing should have changed. Your back doesn't arch off the floor. So make sure that's really solid there. We're going to breathe in to prepare and exhale. Fire your core and opposite arm and leg extend and breathing in to return. And then other side. So this is harder. We're at more like 80% here. Breathing in as you return. Good. And continue firing your core and then extending the arm and leg out. Okay. Again, the arms and legs should feel like they're floating, like they're not really working. That it's the core that's the strongest part of the body. Okay. Breathing out as you extend the shoulders, the jaw, the neck are trying to stay as relaxed as possible as we isolate our navel to spine, our seatbelt really tight. And then only if you're feeling ready, we're going to exhale as both arms and legs extend. And this is the hardest. This is now we're at more like getting to 90, almost 100% firing RTA. So just make sure you're only doing this if you're feeling ready, otherwise stick with the other options. Okay, and so you really need to feel that you're keeping your back in contact with the mat and the towel. You're keeping your navel in towards your spine. You're really holding all of that stable, feeling no discomfort in your back. If you are, you might feel like you need to press down a little bit more. You might even need to make that towel a little bit smaller so that you can really have the proper amount of curvature in your back for you. Okay, just doing two more of whatever variation that you're doing. Okay, there's no rush in progressing. Okay, last one. And relax. And just let your hips shake just to release out any tension. Excellent. Okay, so this next set of exercises is going to be done in the all fours position. So feel free to have padding underneath your knees if you like to have that there. And you could also use the towel for the lower back to help monitor our core stability. Okay, so I'll get you to come into the all fours position. You want to have your hands right underneath your shoulders, your knees right underneath your hips. And then if you're going to use the towel, if you can bring that right into your lower back. Okay, and you want to feel here, we're going to start at about a 50% contraction of the, of the TA, and then as we progress with the exercises, it'll gradually tighten more and more up to its maximum. Okay, and so we're breathing into the bottom of the ribs, widening them out to the side, and breathing out as you draw your ribs in, draw your navel towards your spine, narrow your waist and just feel that TA connection and keep it as you're breathing into the bottom of the ribs and breathing out, okay, holding your neutral spine, okay, feeling your navel press up against the towel so you're not letting the back sag, but you're not letting it round either. You're trying to stay into neutral. Okay, we're going to inhale to prepare and as you exhale, opposite arm and leg are extending out away from the floor and you're maintaining your core stability inhaling as you return and exhaling as opposite arm and leg out maintaining your core stability so you're not letting anything sag you're not letting one shoulder or your hip drop and breathing in as you return and again exhale pre-fire the core feel your navel towards your spine before the arm and leg extend, and then breathing in as you return. <sighs> breathing out, feeling your core connect, and then the arm and leg slide out, and inhale, return. And just continue. Try to slide your arm and leg out. 
okay? So that it creates more smoothness through the movements. And you can have that sense of the core being really strong and it's almost like the limbs are floating, okay? Now staying with this, or if you can, we're gonna do a small add-on. You exhale as you fire your core, you slide the arm and leg out and hold. Breathe in as they extend out to the side, so we're keeping our TA strong. Exhale as they return to front and back again and breathing in as they land. Okay, so only doing that if you're feeling ready. Exhaling, drawing your navel in, extending opposite arm and leg out. Inhaling, they open out to the side, maintaining your stability. Exhaling, they return to front and back, and breathing in as you return back in. And again, breathing out, feeling your navel in, your waist narrow, Breathing in as you open out to the side. Breathing out as you return. And breathing in to lower. And we'll do one more. Breathing out. Feeling your ribs narrow. Your seat belt pull tight across your hips. Breathing in. No shifting through your back, through your shoulders or your hips. And inhale, land. Okay, and so then our next progression is we're going to work towards going into a plank. And so we're going to be firing our core up a little bit more, breathing in to prepare, breathing out, tightening your navel towards your spine, extending one leg out and then the other, and breathing in as they land back in. And nothing should be shifting through your hips or your back. You're extending out when you're not letting the hips lower the back sway. Breathing in as you return in. Okay, if your back sways, I'm sure you'll feel that. It can feel very painful into the back. So you want to press your navel up against the towel. You want to keep your back stable. And breathing in as you return. Okay, breathing out. Just make sure your shoulders are down, that your elbows are not hyperextending, that they have just a soft bend to them. Okay, and doing one more time. Breathing out, firing your TA, holding everything stable, and breathing in as they come back in. Okay, staying with that, or we'll extend out and we'll hold our plank. Okay, and then keeping your core held as you're breathing in and out. Okay, feeling your ribs draw in, you're not letting your ribs sway, you're not letting your low back sway. You're pressing them up, holding them steady for one more breath. And then gently land back down. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that if you can, coming down onto our forearms. Okay, so we're going to have the elbows just a little bit narrower than shoulder width. Interlace your hands and cross your thumbs. Really press your shoulders down your back. And then taking a deep breath in to prepare. Exhaling to fire your core up quite strongly now, <sighs> extending one leg out and then the other, and then holding here. And keeping your TA firing as you're breathing in and out. <sighs> the exhale is always where we can fire it up a little bit more. Just really make sure it's strong for us and feeling no discomfort in your back. If you do, it probably means you've let your back sag. You're always welcome here to land your knees as well, like we did in the all fours position. So just making sure it's in a place for you where you feel strong and stable and connected for one more breath. And gently land your knees down and come back up to sit. Wonderful. All right, so these next set of exercises are all focused on balance. And balance is a great way of stimulating the TA to fire, to hold our spine stable, to hold our hips stable. And so if you have a fitness ball, a BOSU, a balance board, anything like that, I really encourage you to use them often because while you're working out on them, your deep core muscles are always firing to keep the body stable. 
Okay, but today we're going to be balancing mostly on one leg. And so I encourage you to have a chair nearby or a ledge of some kind that you can use to support you because balancing is a very tricky thing and involves not just the use of our TA, but also the stability in our hips, our knees, our ankles, and our feet, as you'll see. And I do have other how-tos that focus on those very places in the body to create more strength and stability. So I encourage you to check them out. Um, but for now, just know that there's a lot going on. Use your chair if you need to. And as I say, we'll keep the TA focus. OK, so we're going to start off standing up tall where we're keeping our TA firing as we're breathing in and out. And we're going to start off at about our 50 percent range. As we progress, we're going to be working up to maybe 80, maybe even 90 percent. So just knowing that it increases as we make the exercises more challenging. We're keeping our TA firing as we breathe into the bottom of the ribs. And then we breathe out, we reinforce our core firing, narrowing our waist, drawing the navel to the spine, tightening the seat belt. Okay, we're going to stand onto our right foot and float the left leg up. And we'll just begin penduling our left leg back and forth. Inhaling back, exhaling forth. Inhaling back, exhaling forth. Okay, using that exhale to fire the TA. Okay, we're trying to keep a neutral spine, holding it stable, and just doing two more. Breathing in and out and in and out and then land that foot down okay try to keep your shoulders your jaw relaxed so we're really using our our deep core muscles okay standing onto your left leg right leg up and pendulum inhale back exhale forth inhale back exhale forth and continue and so the leg as it's moving is really challenging our stability Okay, keeping the spine long and stable, <sighs> firing our navel to spine instead of gripping our neck and our shoulders for two more. <sighs> and last one. <sighs> and then land and change. We're going to stand onto our right foot, bring the left leg up. And now as we breathe in, we're going to hinge forward, bending our standing leg as we go down and exhale coming up, tucking our knee up. Okay, inhaling, hinging down, exhaling, coming back up. And this is harder, so use your chair if you need it. We're keeping the spine stable. Okay, we're holding our neutral spine the whole time. And we'll just do two more. Inhaling down and exhaling up for one more. Breathing in and out. Okay, and land, and we'll change to the other side. Standing onto the left foot, bringing our right leg up, keeping our spine stable. Inhaling, hinging forward with the whole body. Exhaling, coming up. Keeping the core tight all the time. Okay, keeping the spine neutral and straight all the time. Exhaling up. Keeping the waist muscles really engaged. And we'll do two more. Inhaling, timbering down. Exhaling up. And one more. Breathing in. And out. Good. And land. Okay. And then we're going to go out to the side. Okay. To challenge more the side part of our transverse abdominals. And so starting with your right foot onto the floor, left leg up. And we'll inhale as we step, reach out to the side like we're a star. And exhale, coming back into vertical. And continue. Inhaling, going out. Exhaling, coming back in. And just continue. And you can probably feel, I can, the stability that we need through our ankles, knees, and hips. And we'll just do two more, breathing into the side, really keeping our waist muscles long, keeping our navel in, breathing in and out. And land and change. He's standing onto your left foot, right leg up. And 
Inhaling, tipping out to the side. Exhaling, return. Breathing in, using your balance support, your chair if you need it. Okay, we're trying to hold our spine long and straight. When we're tightening in our waist muscles, we'll do two more. Breathing in and out. And last one, breathing in and out and land. And now we're gonna stand onto our right foot. And if you can bring your left foot up onto your right foot just for support. We're keeping our navel to the spine. We're gonna start off with the arms forward and then they're gonna scissor. Breathing in for one and out for one. And continue breathing in and out. Okay, so the moving of the arms really challenges our balance. Okay, we're keeping our TA firing as we're breathing in and out. And out. Good, and just doing two more. Keeping the spine long and stable for your last one. And land. And change feet. So standing onto your left foot, bringing your right leg up, holding the navel to the spine, starting with the arms up. Inhaling for one. Exhaling for one. And keeping the navel in all the time. Breathing in and out. And in and out. And just doing two more. The last one. And land. The last thing, we're going to stand on both feet and we're going to be doing a squat and then rising up onto the toes. And so coming into the squat, just make sure your feet are hip distance apart. All 10 toes are pointing straight ahead. We're going to breathe in as you come down into your squat. You're keeping your neutral spine. Your abdominals are already firing there. And as you breathe out, rise up. Firing your TA, feeling your waist, feeling your navel to spine, feeling your seat belt. And again, inhaling, coming into the squat, keeping the spine straight. And exhaling, firing your TA, feeling your waist, your navel, and your seat belt. All that firing, breathing in and out. And we'll just do two more, breathing in, keeping the TA firing as you're breathing in and reinforcing it as you breathe out. And last one, breathing in and out. And relax down, awesome. Okay, and so the last thing that I want to say about the TA is to apply it into all of your daily activities. I've already talked about if you're sitting at your computer to be holding your TA a little bit so that you can keep your back supported, breathing low into the bottom of the ribs and breathing out, just reinforcing that TA connection so that you can keep the pressure off of your spine and you're not breathing shallowly up into your chest. And then also when you're going for a walk, if you can practice keeping your TA engaged, keeping your spine long, having good posture while you're walking, letting your legs and your arms just really swing freely while you're holding your core muscles strong to support your back, to give you more power. And then when you're working out, if you can apply the TA into every exercise that you do. And so for example, if you're doing a squat and you have weights, for example, you're gonna keep your TA firing as you're breathing in and out. And so you'd come down into your squat, and then just before you're about to push on the hardest part of the exercise with whatever it is, you're going to exhale, fire your TA even a little bit more, give it a bit of extra juice as you do whatever motion that you're doing so that you have more support for your back, for your spine, and even for your upper body. Okay, so you're firing 
the TA on the exhale just before the moment of maximum of exertion, okay? Or if you're doing a lunge, for example, you're coming into your lunge, you're holding your core tight, you're keeping your TA engaged as you breathe in, but then you use your exhale to fire your TA even a little bit more on that moment of maximum exertion. Okay, the same goes if you have weights or if you're even just picking something up heavy off the floor. You use your exhale to fire your TA and then pick up whatever it is that you're picking up. Okay, and then you can apply it even into yoga. If you're keeping your spine long and straight as you hinge forward, you exhale, you fire your TA, you feel that seatbelt as you're coming up so that your spine is staying long and straight and protected. Or even if you're just holding poses, that you can stay in the pose, hold it, keep your TA firing as you're breathing in and out, really reinforcing it on the exhale, but keeping it on the inhale as you breathe down into the bottom of your ribs. So that you feel that with no matter what you're doing, you can stay really strong if from the inside out with all of your daily activities. And so I really hope that you enjoy discovering just how much core strengthening you can create throughout your day. So thank you for working out with me. I think this is very important information that everyone needs to have in order to keep their spine and their whole body feeling as strong and as connected from the inside out as possible. And so if you did find this how-to useful, I invite you to give it a like, to subscribe to my channel, and to share it with those whom you think might benefit. Now in the description, you'll see a link to the Fully Embodied Fitness Workout Series, which is a series of workouts that I've designed to improve and increase strength, especially core strength, flexibility, balance, posture, coordination, and overall body connection. So if feeling more fully embodied sounds interesting to you, I invite you to check that out. Until the next time, as always, I'm wishing you well. Take good care.